In this video, I want to explain how you can recover or construct a model from a completed open branch. Now, this particular video might presuppose a little bit of knowledge that I might ha have been covered already in some of the videos that I've done thus far, but you can maybe kind of read around or you can ask questions in the comment section below if you don't quite understand something. So let me give you a little bit of context. Let's say you have an English argument you want to test to see if it's valid or invalid. So what you do is you'd start by translating it into predicate logic. So phi, psi, and chi right here, let's just say that these are predicate logic well-formed formulas. Then you would set up the truth tree by taking the premises and then negation of the conclusion. You'd stack these particular formulas. Then you would decompose the tree using the decomposition rules. And then you would find to see, you would look to see if there's a completed open branch or if the tree is closed. If there is a completed open tree, that is there's a tree with at least one completed open branch, then we know that there is at least one model where all of the well-formed formulas in the stack are true. That is, we would know that this formula, if there's a completed open branch, this formula, and this formula, oops, uh, are all true. And if that's the case, then it's possible for the premises to be true and the, con the negation of the conclusion to be true, which is just another way of saying it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. And if that's the case, then the argument would be invalid. So a completed open tree of these particular formulas would show us that, or indicates to us, is that there's at least one model one configuration of the world that makes all of the premises of the argument true and the conclusion false. So what this video is going to aim at doing is explain to you how you can construct or recover a kind of toy model from that completed open branch. So let's look into this. Before I explain how we can construct a model from a completed open branch, it's helpful just to remind ourselves of one particular definition. And this is the notion of a literal well-formed formula. All a literal well-formed formula is is an n-place predicate followed by n names or a negated n-place predicate followed by n names. So here are some examples of some literal well-formed formulas. PA, it's an n-place predicate followed by n names, not PA, RAB, RAA, not RAA. Another way of thinking about what a literal well-formed formula is, it's a simple formula that we cannot decompose further using our decomposition rules. So now I can talk about the step-by-step -step process by which you would recover a model from a completed open branch. After I kind of walk through this step-by-step -step process, then I'll look through an example. It might be helpful once I've gone through the example to come back to this portion of the video and look through the steps once again. The first step is to identify a completed open branch. This is what we'll use to recover the model. I covered what a completed open branch is in an earlier video, and so if you're not sure what a completed open branch is, I'll put a link in the description below, and you can check out that video before coming back here. The next is to start from the base of the completed open branch and work your way up through the branch, writing down all of the literal well-formed formulas in a branch. So let's just imagine we had a branch that contained the literal well-formed formulas PA, PB, and not QB. The next part of constructing a model from this completed open branch is to give an interpretation for each of the names in that branch. We have two names in our branch, we have A and B, and so we'll want to have these names designate some item in the domain. The reference of our objects is kind of up to you. It could be numbers, it could be colors, it could be movies. It's whatever you want to talk about. For simplicity's sake, I'll have the names actually refer to some dummy object that I'll just call A or B. So what this is doing here is saying I'm going to let the name A refer to some object A. And I'll let the name B, it refers to some object B. And both A and B are objects in the domain. The fourth step is that for every name interpreted in terms of some item in the domain, we need to explicitly indicate what those items are, or we need to explicitly indicate that those items form a part of the domain. The idea here is that we're saying that the interpretation of the name A refers to some object A, and the interpretation of the name B refers to some object B. And so we'll need to specify that A and B are part of the domain. 
If you had A refer to a num the number one and B refer to the number two, then you need to specify that the, those, the numbers one and two are part of the domain. If you had A refer to your favorite movie and B refer to your least favorite movie, whatever those movies might be, then you need to specify that in terms of the domain here. The last step involves the interpretation of the predicates. And there's a couple ways of doing this, but I think one way is to simply write out the literals or look at the literal well-formed formulas. And so we had PA, PB, and not QB. And then we'll develop an interpretation of the predicates that would make each of these formulas true. So PA true, PB true, and not QB true. And so when we go to interpret PA, we need to make sure that A is found in the interpretation of P, because if it's not, then PA won't be true. And B is also found in the interpretation of P, because if it isn't, then PB won't be true. With respect to not QB, we need to make sure, or we need to have an interpretation of Q, such that B is not found in its interpretation. And so we could do something like say, okay, Q, the interpretation of A, of Q only has A. It refers to the object A. A is the thing that has property Q. What's important here is that the interpretation of Q does not contain B. It can it contain uh, an ob the object A or it might refer to nothing at all. So our second interpretation over here is again we have A, the interpretation of P refer to A and B but here we have the interpretation of Q just refer to nothing. It doesn't refer to any object in the domain. Another way of writing that is using the empty set symbol. We simply indicate that the interpretation of Q contains no items. So now let's put all this together and look at a concrete example. So suppose we have done the work of translating our English argument into the language of predicate logic. And so we have something like PA, not RC, QB, therefore not AXPX. We then take all of that and put it in the truth tree we decompose all the formulas in the truth tree, and what we find is that we have a truth tree with one completed open branch. What this indicates to us is that we can construct a model that would make all of these particular formulas true. In other words, it would make this particular argument invalid or a case of non-entailment. So how do we do this? Well, first we can just kind of simply state that we're going to construct a model and that consists of two things, the domain of discourse and the interpretation. Next, we'll start by listing out all of the literal well-formed formulas. So we have all these particular formulas written out. That's PA, RC, QB, PA, PB, and PC. You'll see that PA is found twice in this branch, but it's uh, we only need to kind of write it down once. With the literal well-formed formulas all written down, we'll take a look at how many names there are. There's A, B, and C, and we we'll want to make sure we give an interpretation of those names. Again, I'm gonna let the name A refer to some object A. You can let the name A refer to something else if you want. You can have it refer to numbers, people's favorite movies, so forth and so on. Uh, but just to kind of keep things abstract and general enough, I'm just gonna have A refer to A, B refer to B, C refer to C. The next thing we wanna make sure we do is indicate explicitly, since we're constructing a model that consists of a domain and an interpretation, that the objects A, B, and C are part of this domain. So I said that the name A refers to the object A, and so here I'm writing that there is an object A, object B, and object C in the domain. The last part of our model involves writing all the literal well-formed formulas down and constructing an interpretation of the predicates that is would make all the literal well-formed formulas true. And so I'll start with PA, PB, and PC. I see these particular uh, formulas all contain the predicate P, and so I wanna construct an interpretation of the predicate P that would make each one of these literal well-formed formulas true. And so what I need is an interpretation of P that contains A, B, and C, that contains each one of those objects. And so I'll write the interpretation of P contains A, B, and C. And once again, I know I said this a couple times, if your A referred to a number like one, B referred to two, C referred to three, then you'd write one, two, and three, the objects that the names refer to. Next, I wanna make sure that not RC is true. I want to construct an interpretation of R that makes sure that not RC is the case. 
Well, that would be any interpretation that does not contain C. It could be, we could interpret R in terms of A and B, or interpret R in terms of A, or interpret R in terms of just B. Or we can have an interpretation of R where it refers to no objects in the domain. What's important for making not RC true is that the interpretation of R does not contain C. And this is an example of such an interpretation. Lastly, we have QB. This is another literal well-formed form that we want to make sure our interpretation of Q is, uh, makes this particular formula true. And what we'll need is an interpretation that makes that has B inside of it. So we interpret Q as having the object B. But we could develop a more expansive interpretation here. We could have Q refer to A, B, and C. So long as it contains B, then Q, B will come out as true. So here we've cleaned everything up. What we said was that if you have a completed open branch, like the like we have here, we can construct a model, at least one model, that consists of a domain and interpretation. And that model is an illustration or a configuration that would make all of the formulas in the completed open branch true. And so our model consists of a domain that contains object A, B, and C, an interpretation of each of the names that are found in the completed open branch, which is A, B, and C, an interpretation of each one of these names, an interpretation of all of the predicate terms in terms of objects that are found in the domain. So what the model does is provide us an explicit example or configuration or the or way the world would be or a way something could be that would make the premises of the argument true and the conclusion false. So in this video, I showed how from a complete open branch, you could construct a model. Now, obviously, this would look different if you were testing a real life English argument. If you're interested in such an example, let me know in the comments below, and I'm happy to provide a more fleshed out example of this.